In this video, we are going to explore eight ways of using InPainting. InPainting is the lasso selection tool in the top toolbar that you can use to generate renderings on specific areas without changing the other parts of the image. So let's jump in. Number one, exploring alternatives. When exploring the renderings in the workbench view, sometimes we want to gain additional control over some of the granular details as we narrow down on the selected results to move forward with. In this case, we can kickstart the refinement process by opening the Brush Studio view to access the in-painting feature. This way we can select and re-render alternatives for a certain element. Number two, mixing different styles. If we made a rendering in a specific style, but we still want to visualize some of the elements in a different flavor, we can use the in-painting tool to change whichever style we want to reimagine the part in. This way, we can mix and match styles together according to their advantages. For example, the automotive exterior gives a nice fluid body, but the Viscom General will give more realistic wheels, so I can easily combine them this way. Number three, implementing quick design changes. If we want to change parts on a rendering by roughly sketching over them, we can easily implement these changes by using the Refine mode in combination with the in-painting selection mask. This way, the rough changes will be morphed into the cohesive aesthetic of the entire rendering. Number four, separately rendering sketches. A clever way of using the selection mask is that if we want to have an isolated rendering, we can roughly circle in the sketch. This way, the image will only live within the sketch boundaries, maintaining a sterile white background so we can easily repurpose this rendering as a standalone visual. Number five, matching different views. When we want to showcase a product on a board in different views, we can also use the in-painting tool to match the separate views together, rendering the same object essentially. Selecting Viscom General will make them pretty nice and realistic with a prompt describing materials and the object. Number six, removing elements. We can also remove unwanted elements by selecting them and using 0% drawing influence and no prompt description. You can find a dedicated video on this feature. Number seven, extending an image. If we have a smaller image that we want to extend or put into wider context, we can just simply make a bigger canvas that we can import the small image onto. And then by selecting each part of the image with in-painting, similarly like this, touching inside of the original image boundaries, and by using 0% drawing influence will naturally extend the image as a cohesive visual. Number eight, changing backgrounds. We can make new backgrounds by selecting roughly the object, leaving a bit of a transition zone, and inverting the selection will allow control over the environment that we can describe with a simple prompt. Using low drawing influence will allow freedom for Viscom to construct a new background. And now, all the previously used masks will be stored in the History tab that you can recover by applying the settings. This way, none of the masks will be lost if you generated a rendering with them before. Which do you think is the most useful technique? Do you have another way of using in-painting? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to try these workflows in your process at viscom.ai.